Welcome to the Maths Made Easy tutorial on frequency trees. So a frequency tree is essentially just a tool that we use for categorizing our data. Uh, so the best way to sort of explain it is just to look at an example question. So 120 people were given three minutes to solve a puzzle. 45 people who tried to solve the puzzle were under 18. 78 people solved the puzzle. 32 people aged 18 and over did not solve the puzzle. Construct a frequency tree using this information. Now all this data seems quite jumbled up, and that's because it is a bit jumbled up. Uh, but we can start by dividing our data into two categories. So these will be the first two branches of the frequency tree. And those are people who are under 18 and people who are aged 18 and over. Uh, so let's add labels to our branches. So that's under 18 and then it's 18 and over. Now the question says that 45 people who tried to solve the puzzle were under 18. So that means we can put 45 at the end of the first branch. Uh, and it also says in the question that there's 120 people in total. So that means that the remaining people must be 18 and over. Uh, so we can get that by doing 120 minus 45, and that is 75. So now we can subdivide our two categories even further into people who solved the puzzle and people who didn't solve the puzzle. Uh, so let's label the branches solved and not solved. And we'll do the same for the bottom. So solved and not solved, we'll call them. Uh, now, if we look at the question, it says that 32 people aged 18 and over did not solve the puzzle. So if we go to the 18 and over branch, which is this one on the bottom, 32 people did not solve the puzzle. So we can add 32 uh, to the bottom branch of the tree diagram. Now from here, there's another part that we can fill out. And that's because we know that there's 75 people that are aged 18 and over. And of those 75 people, uh, 32 did not solve the puzzle. So that means the remaining people in that 75 uh, must have solved the puzzle. And so that is 43 people. So that's just 75 minus 32. So how are we going to fill out these top two branches? Well, um, we know that 78 people solved the puzzle in total. Uh, and 43 of those people are aged 18 and over. So that's this branch here. Uh, so uh, in order to work out the people who are under 18 and solve the puzzle, we just do 78 minus 43, and that gives us 35. Uh, now it's pretty straightforward to fill out the rest of it. Uh, there's only one branch left. Uh, so in total, there are 45 people under 18, 35 of them solved the puzzle. So that means the remaining 10 did not solve the puzzle. So there's just a couple of things to point out with this diagram. Uh, the first is that I didn't necessarily have to do the tree diagram in this order. So the first division that I made could have been people who solved the puzzle and then people who didn't solve. And then I could have divided those uh, two into people who are under 18 and 18 and over. So it doesn't really matter uh, which way you do it. I just chose to do it this way. Uh, the other is that there's 120 people in total. Uh, so we can put 120 at the start of the tree diagram as well. So moving on to the second part then. Using the frequency tree from the previous example, so I've just copied it across here, if you choose one of the under 18s at random, what is the probability that they did not solve the puzzle? Uh, well here we're only considering people who are under 18, uh, so that's these top three branches here, uh, and you can see that there's a total of 45 people that are under 18. So the total is 45. So what is the probability that they did not solve the puzzle? Uh, well 10 of the 45 people didn't solve the, the puzzle, so the probability is 10 over 45. If you cancel that down, you can divide both by five. That gives you two ninths. So if you want to get some practice with frequency trees exam style questions, then why not have a go at our online exam? It's available through our revision platform. And if you take the test, you'll find loads of different questions to have a go at, a variety of different question types, and you get instant feedback on all of it. So you can keep track of your progress, find out where you need to improve, and you'll see the work solutions for all of the questions. So if you're interested, then click the link below. It'll take you straight over there.